I just want to preface this loosely structured review noting that aside from playing around with a Kinect using K-Scan 3D and uh, the other software, and photogrammetry, this is my first hands-on experience with a proper 3D scanner. That means that, while it is very cool that I can scan black and metal objects without necessarily using a scanning spray, I may not properly appreciate this in the way that would probably make other people look on this scanner more favorably, especially those who haven't had this as their sort of baseline expectations. So, this is the Revopoint Metro X, a blue laser 3D scanner that was launched on Kickstarter and also in Campfire uh, for the Japan market for crowdfunding. I've had mine for a couple weeks and I've spent most of my free time testing the scanner and learning how to use it. However, I haven't actually been able to test it using scanning spray since mine didn't arrive. It features a few scanning modes, full field which uses the multi-line projector in a single pattern, Auto Turntable, which uses three to five different passes of structured light from the multi-line projector, and then it can incrementally rotate and tilt the table to allow capturing multiple angles just for a more complete scan. It also has two blue laser scanning modes, which either use seven or 14 lines for capturing details on black or reflective shiny surfaces, which Auto Turntable and Full Field mode can't seem to capture for the most part. The 14 mode is faster than the 7-line mode, and apparently captures a bit less sort of detail, but in my testing I haven't really noticed a significant difference between the 7 and 14-line modes. Laser scanning requires you to use retro-reflective markers, which are either going to be taped onto the object or placed on marker blocks around it. These are picked up by the two outer cameras on the scanner, which is surrounded with a blue ring of LEDs. Turntable in full feature mode can work without uh, markers, however, using feature detection. Unfortunately, at the moment, feature detection seems to have quite poor tracking in my testing. You need to have something with a very sort of distinct set of different features. That means that you want to use those reflective markers whenever possible for best performance. I found that the global marker tracking mode, which is where you first scan the locations of the reflective markers and then do the actual scan data in a second step, works significantly better than standard marker tracking, resulting in less sort of bad erroneous data being written when you lose tracking and re-pick it up. It does a much better job of actually um, countering this. However, standard marker tracking does work quite well, and then feature tracking is the worst overall. That does mean it lets you do more complex objects with relative ease in a single scan, such as the Airsoft Grenade Launcher, which I mounted on a post, did the global scan of first for marking all the marker locations. That also lets you sort of preview the shape with the markers and make sure it's not picking up any bad ones. And then you can do that whole object in one single scan, which is pretty nice. Laser scanning modes seem to provide more accurate dimensions, however they add a lot of orange peel artifacting to scan surfaces, even like perfectly smooth ones that I've done. Uh, regardless of the combination of brightness and exposure that I tried, this means that they'll probably be more suited towards uh, reverse engineering than scanning and printing something. Um, auto turntable mode results in really much crisper and better looking surfaces than the laser mode, which seems a little counterintuitive. You would think that the laser mode would be the sharpest one. The auto turntable mode is less accurate for pulling measurements from, so it wouldn't be as good for reverse engineering, but anything that you want to scan and 3D print with minimal cleanup and good detail, that means that you would need to use auto turntable mode, as in my opinion, the laser modes are just not viable for that. Uh, I've tried 3D printing on an FDM printer, and the laser artifacts on the surface are somewhat visible. On a SLA print, they are going to be very visible and, uh, in my opinion, completely unusable. Other issues I've had include an extremely slow update of the UI and cameras in auto turntable mode that makes it really tedious to align the scanner with the object in the turntable while you're setting it up. The RGB camera is only 1080p or 2.1 megapixel. That means that you get pretty lackluster image quality. However, mine has been showing glitching and artifacting when scanning. That might be contributing to this. Uh, and laser modes, when you have an object on the auto turntable, will have it start spinning, but they will also burn in a defective spiral or circular pattern into the scan from the laser oversampling one area which means that laser scanning on the turntable for sort of uh, long scans to make sure you got lots of frames for a nice sort of relatively accurate surfaces aren't really usable either the turntable is really only suited for auto turntable mode 
or static if you're going to be moving the scanner manually. The scanner has a relatively shallow depth of field, like a distance from the object where it will actually provide optimal scan resolution, and the markers are only picked up with a relatively shallow field of view overall, which means, especially for curved surfaces, you need more markers than you would expect to maintain tracking around curves and corners and that sort of thing. I found that inverting the scanner or putting it sideways can't help with this. The camera closest to the cable appears to be the primary one that does marker tracking, while the camera on the other end of the scanner seems to be the primary one for gathering scan data. That means that to get to sort of underneath something, if you flip the scanner upside down, it can maintain tracking and gather more scan data a bit better that way, so actually inverting it can be quite helpful. The included laser protection goggles are also only, unfortunately, sort of a tinted plastic. They're not the proper mirrored, high-quality reflective ones that you would receive with more powerful lasers, like if you're buying like an actual proper 1-watt blue laser or something like that. The plastic is also fairly cheap and fragile feeling, and the size is a little small, even for me, so people with larger heads are definitely going to have trouble finding them comfortable or even using them at all. Uh, I would probably suggest sourcing a nice, higher-quality pair of laser uh, goggles. They do filter out the color well, but I wouldn't trust them for uh, direct eye exposure. I did also try scanning on two under-spec laptops, one with an i7-4720HQ and a 970M, and also a newer one with a Ryzen 5 7530U. Both had essentially unusable performance in laser modes. Uh, they would probably work fine for laser or for automatic turntable modes, but it does seem like, especially for laser mode, you do need a really quite beefy machine to run it. Revapoint also did say that you can't take a project from one machine and compute it on another one. However, I tested this and you need to manually create a project with the same name and then overwrite the files in it, but you can take a scan from another totally different computer and render it and fuse it and process it on a higher end workstation. However, given the demands on the scanner uh, host PC, it seems like you would just be better off investing in one sort of quite powerful laptop or small desktop. There are quite a lot of other notes that I have and ideas, but that would result in the video being pretty long. Um, but there are some key improvements I'd like to see from Revopoint. The first and foremost is fixed laser artifacting. I don't think laser scan modes are really all that usable right now, um, especially like the like the surface orange peel texturing that happens on them on perfectly smooth surfaces that is going to have an impact when you're pulling measurements from something if you're trying to reverse engineer something exactly it might be good for a bit of a reference but calipers are going to be better for that anyways it will be good for like curved surfaces and weird shapes but uh it's not going to be sort of the reverse engineering tool that i hoped it would be with that artifacting I would also like to see them increase uh, or allow a smaller distance in the fusing uh, for laser scan modes. Currently, auto turntable does 0.05 millimeters, whereas laser scans only do 0.15 in the current software version. I think maybe that contributes a bit to the sort of overall much sharper uh, and crisper detail level of auto turntable scans. I'd also obviously like to see them improve full field tracking mode when handheld especially, but also even just for turntable, it's really not that good. Uh, it loses tracking a lot, ghosts a lot of the time, and I've had small rectangular parts sort of extend into infinity when I was scanning due to mistakes. Uh, and I'd also like to see them implement a single shot mode that uses the multiple uh, structured light patterns like auto turntable mode. This means that you would need to put your tripod mount onto like a bigger tripod to move the scanner around objects, but then you could do the multi-pass structured light scan of bigger things, which means you could scan larger objects with that really nice crisp quality that auto turntable mode uses. It wouldn't be workable handheld, but it would be a nice option to have, and just having more options is always a good thing. I also don't particularly like established, fairly large companies using Kickstarter to launch new products. Uh, the hardware and injection molds would have already been finalized, especially with their plans to ship in early December. They did miss this deadline for most people, and they kept pushing it back, and I've even seen some standard store orders arriving before Kickstarter backers. Overall, they had pretty poor communication and a distinct lack of sample scans and demonstrations before the actual Kickstarter launch and well into the campaign. They only allowed unboxing videos from third parties, which offer no real value in trying to assess a product if you're going to be looking at spending, you know, 
$1,500 on something, or even less with the Kickstarter backing. It's nice to have actual tangible stuff. I also had a pretty not-so-great interaction with one of their moderators outside of their forum. That does mean that, hey, at least in compensation, I was supposed to get a scanning spray bottle from them, which I still haven't gotten. But that did sour my opinion pretty badly on the product, combined with um, just the lack of overall examples and scans beforehand, uh, which I can now sort of see why they didn't provide. Since it was a Kickstarter, that does mean I was able to get the scanner at a good discount, which softens my opinion on it a little bit, but unfortunately I'm still fairly disappointed with its performance. I kind of feel like it was rushed to compete with the Creality Raptor X that had a similar name, a similar release window, I saw ads for both of them at the same time, and the software just sort of is early and not there yet for the expectations I had, despite my attempts to sort of you know, uh, temper them and not uh, hype it up too much. Trying to scan small mechanical parts especially has been quite disappointing. Laser mode seemed to still not work that well for that given the sort of softness and lack of detail they're picking up compared to auto turntable. Again, I haven't been able to put scanning spray on any of those to test it out. But it does seem much more useful for medium to larger size objects such as the lower control arm that you've primarily been seeing as background footage. I have also seen some other more qualified people with the necessary software test the accuracy on flat surfaces and larger objects, and it appears to suffer from fairly significant drift, which is a little concerning. Software stability and connecting the Bluetooth on the other hand has been relatively reliable. I've maybe experienced a dozen uh, crashes to desktop through quite a lot of use, and uh, so it's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's not unusable. Uh, I've seen other people complain about it a lot more, but in my experience it's been kind of what I expected for early software. I can see the potential this thing has, and I think given some time and some more software improvements I'll be much more satisfied with it. However, given the performance of sample scans I've seen from other scanners, if I had seen those before I backed the Kickstarter, or even was most of the way through it, I think I probably would have looked elsewhere at this point in time. I think that's part of why they didn't release too many scans early is because the software performance and just the scan performance was lacking. If you are looking at buying the scanner, I think you should hold off and wait to hear about improvements and see better sample scans that lack that orange peel texturing. That might not be an issue for you, but for me it is a pretty big disappointment, especially since I haven't been able to fix it. I will say if you do get the scanner, expect a bit of a learning curve, expect to invest some time in it before you even start to get moderately useful results. I still haven't been able to get a nice crisp scan of the little statue that they send with it as a sample unit. I haven't been able to get the hair detail that they have in their demo scan, and I think that is again just sort of software improvements need to be made. I will say I'm sure I will find this scan useful for a lot of different projects. Unfortunately, it doesn't meet the hopes that I had for it, for scan fidelity and being sort of a real-world copy-paste in real life when using it with FDM or SLA printers. It's just not at that level. It's not capable of doing that. For reverse engineering use and designing brackets and mounts and holder for things, that's going to be great. But copy-paste into real life, it's not, and I still think it has a long way to go to meet uh, the competition in terms of just scan fidelity and quality.